Welcome to Scripture Meditation. Today we are going to a beautiful garden to be with Jesus in the most agonizing time of his life on earth. This day, Maundy Thursday, Holy Thursday, we remember the washing of the disciples' feet and the Last Supper. But I want to look at the passage that follows that evening after the Last Supper. A look into the heart of Jesus. As I could not choose which of the Gospel accounts to read from today, I decided to read all three. The fourth Gospel account in the book of John, chapter 17, is such a special prayer that I'll be saving that one for a meditation on another day. Travel with me now, in your mind, to a beautiful garden. Maybe you have been to a botanical garden or an arboretum before, so you have some idea of what the Garden of Gethsemane may have looked like. Imagine gravel pathways leading through a grove of beautifully mature olive trees. They stand about 25 feet tall. They have thick knobby trunks that are firmly rooted in the ground. Their branches hover over the rocky pathway with small light green leaves. Those leaves rustling in the wind. Below the trees are beautiful bushes full of purple and red flowers that attract the butterflies and ladybugs. As you continue to walk along the path in the shade of the trees, you may notice the sounds of birds overhead. You may hear a trickle of water from a stream a ways off in the distance. As the sun begins to set, the warm rays touch your face through the branches of the trees. All is peaceful, calm, and quiet. And as you enjoy the last bit of light on this day, you start to hear some people coming. Four men in particular. One of them looks familiar to you. You find a nice grassy spot tucked up against one of the trees to sit and listen and watch. And as they get closer, you realize that you do recognize one of them and you remember his name, Jesus. Let's listen as he begins to speak. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he told the disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. Taking along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is swallowed up in sorrow to the point of death. 
remain here and stay awake with me. Going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He asked Peter, So couldn't you stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came again and found them sleeping because they could not keep their eyes open. After leaving them, he went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the time is near. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. See, my betrayer is near. Jesus is so upset. He seems to be in absolute agony. What is this cup he is referring to? Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he told his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and horrified. Then he said to them, My soul is swallowed up in sorrow to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake. Then he went a little farther, fell to the ground, and began to pray that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping. Simon, are you sleeping? He asked Peter. Couldn't you stay awake one hour? Stay awake. Pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once again, he went away and prayed, saying the same thing. And he came again and found them sleeping because they could not keep their eyes open. They did not know what to say to him. Then he came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The time has come. Look, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. See? My betrayer is near.
Jesus is so kind and compassionate even in his deep distress. He is concerned for his disciples, wanting them to pray so that their spirits would be strengthened. He went out and made his way as usual to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he told them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and began to pray. Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. Being in anguish, he prayed more fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he got up from prayer and came to the disciples, he found them sleeping, exhausted from their grief. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. Oh my Jesus, sweat drops like blood? Did you see the angel come to him? He went out and made his way as usual to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he told them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Then. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and began to pray. Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him strengthening him. Being in anguish, he prayed more fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he got up from prayer and came to the disciples, he found them sleeping, exhausted from their grief. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. Oh, our Heavenly Father, this is our Jesus. This is your Son. He's praying so fervently and in so much anguish and sorrow about what is going to happen next. But he continues to be obedient to you and to do your will. Lord God, may we do the same. Out of love for you, may we obey and walk the path that you have for us. And I thank you, God, that Jesus prays for us and reminds us that we need to be in constant prayer so that we might not enter into temptation. And also, Lord, in this day and age, we need to be alert. We need to be awake. Help us, God, to remember to see you in everything, to know your truth, and to be watching and waiting for your return. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Son, in whose name I pray. Amen.